Hi, my name is Pierre Nouveau and I will uh, present you very first results suggesting that genomic regions could be repeatedly involved in host plant adaptation in the PA feed complex. So here is our classical study case to um, different populations uh, that have evolved from an ancestral population in two different, two contrasted environments. Uh, and uh, this uh, classical uh, example is uh, depicted on the logo of the conference. Um, we can have the replicated adaptation uh, as we have in sticklebacks, for example. And uh, with this pattern, we can uh, assess the uh, re reliability of the results. Um, but uh, we always deal with two environments here. What happens if we have more than two environments, three, four, five? And what could be interesting then is that if those uh, uh, different environments are just slightly different. For example, that what we've got with trophic adaptation in phytophagous insects. And it raises the question, do multiple cases of adaptation to slightly different environments can involve the same genomic regions? Uh, to tackle this question, we study the, the PA feed, uh, phytophagous insects, which developed on a wide host plant range. And uh, here's a few interesting facts about PA feed and its host plant. Uh, it is its habitat, its breeding site, and also its source of food. Three conditions we could favor assertive mating. And moreover, um, reci reciprocal transfer experiments have shown that uh, there's a negative genetic correlation in performances between two races, two biotypes. When we put an alfalfa uh, bug on a clover plant, uh, the fitness on this clover plant is lower than it is on alfalfa. And that's the same for the, the clover bug. And it suggests a strong host plant specialization. So um, this is uh, recent results coming from, from our group. Um, here you've got a, a sampling performed on Western Europe and roughly a thousand individuals that were genotyped at 14 microsatellite loci. And what we see here is a really nice plant-associated genetic structure. And uh, we've shown also that uh, all these different clusters uh, have evolved from a last maternal ancestor uh, that lived eight to 16,000 years ago, uh, which could suggest a quite radi rapid adaptive radiation. So to sum up all these informations, we have 11 different biotypes, which shows a great divergence continuum. Um, we've got host races with a flow amount of gene flow at each generation and putative cryptic species, meaning that for those three biotypes in the field, we can't find any uh, hybrid. It could suggest a total reproductive isolation. So uh, the, the purpose of this study was to identify genomic regions that are implied in host plant adaptation. First, we focused on the three most common biotypes, pea, clover, and alfalfa, uh, with a quite big number of markers, a classical genome scan approach. And in the second step, uh, we tried to assess the validity of those results in the uh, remaining biotypes. So here's uh, the genome scan. We did a hierarchical sampling of uh, three biotypes in three different sites in Eastern France and Switzerland. Um, and uh, we genotyped all these uh, individuals at 400 microsatellite loci. Here is the world, geneti world genome genetic structure. Uh, and we see classical results in the PA field, uh, meaning that the uh, host plant structure is uh, way uh, more important than geographic structure within biotypes. <coughs> we then performed a genome scan based uh, on the model developed in Harlequin. Um, and these are the results. In the black dots are the 400 microsatellite mi markers. Uh, we worked with 99% confidence interval. 
and we identified 11 outlier loci at uh, this uh, risk. We then looked at the functions of the genes located in the vicinity of those uh, loci and uh, we interestingly found uh, two genes coding for olfactory receptors and uh, three genes coding for salivary proteins and those uh, gene functions could be related to a process of uh, trophic adaptation. So we had our candidates in this first step. Let's have a look if they are about the same uh, outlier status in the other biotypes. So uh, to do so, we need a neutral reference and uh, uh, we used 12 non-outlier loci from this data set to give us the, this neutral reference. Uh, we relied on the wall complex sampling performed in Western Eastern France, sorry, um, with a single sampling site. But uh, as I've shown you before, um, the geographical genetic structure is really weak within biotypes in the, the PA feed. So here's the sampling size, 150 individuals. Uh, and uh, for the research of signatures of selection, we didn't use the free formerly used biotypes for sure. Here's the genetic structure we found with those 23 loci. Uh, I put here with the, the yellow stars uh, the formerly used biotype, but as you can see here, we've got uh, strong genetic structures that correlates with uh, the host plant. And here's the results of the uh, research of signatures of selection. We're not uh, strictly speaking in uh, uh, a genome scan here. We've got an hypothesis uh, on those first outlier loci. So uh, in green here, you've got the 12 non-outlier loci and uh, in black and red, the outlier loci we have previously identified. And uh, interestingly, four of those outliers are still outliers uh, at uh, the world genome, world, sorry, world biotype, world complex uh, level um, and always with high level of divergence. These um, outliers are still uh, interesting in terms of functions because uh, we found the two genes coding for olfactory receptors that are near those outliers. And uh, it raises the question, um, those high levels of divergence, uh, what are they due to? Which biotype contribute to this pattern? And to tackle this question, we uh, performed trees for each of these outliers. Uh, trees based on a little sharing distance. So uh, those trees here can segregate the different biotypes, okay? And uh, we then looked of at the allelic frequencies in each biotype. These are the diagrams depicted here. And for this analysis, we took the 11 biotypes. And uh, what's interesting here is that we can do uh, sort of clusters in a pure qualitative manner, uh, trying to uh, cluster uh, biotypes that seem a bit similar. And we can do it for every, each four outlier here. And uh, we can see two important things here. First, uh, the results are, are quite difficult to interpret and then um, we always cluster different biotypes together with each different outlier. So this is very uh, work in progress here, but I try a, a tentative conclusion. So we identify the 11 outlier loci um, with our genome scans in the three most common biotypes. And four of these outliers were also identified uh, in the eight remaining biotypes. Those outliers are in the vicinity of candidate genes, like salivary system, 
uh, because aphids have developed uh, uh, salivary effectors that can knock down the um, mechanisms of plants for uh, protect them against the uh, feeding of aphids. And we also found uh, the chemosensory system uh, that is used by aphids to uh, recognize, identify the plant host, the host plant. Uh, and then the last part with the, the trees, which is much more uh, complicated to, to interpret. Uh, it looks like some genomic regions are involved okay, in the adaptive radiation, but that host plants may select specifically combinations. To uh, illustrate this, uh, let's imagine that for four different um, Host plants here, I've depicted the chromosomes you need to be adapted to these host plants. And in the first case here, you need to have uh, the two blue alleles at those two loci. But this combination is also needed to be adapted to this plant, but with this, uh, uh, allele, this green allele here. And so on, this green allele is also needed, but with another combination, and so on, and so on. So it's a really tentative conclusion, and if you've got any idea, it will, I would be uh, glad to, to, to hear about it to explain those results. <coughs> and um, what's next? We are uh, going to use, uh, or we started to use, uh, next generation sequencing uh, strategies to uh, address those questions. Uh, they can allow to have massive uh, um, amount of data. And uh, we already have a reference genome which is available for the PA feed. So it, it will uh, uh, be uh, quite simple to have access to very interesting information here. So what we do is we have sequenced three genome per biotypes, uh, whole genome resequencing, uh, with access to coding and non-coding regions. And uh, uh, we're starting to analyze those data and we also did a pool sec approach for three of those biotypes the three most common biotypes so in a few words the pool sec approach uh, we do um, individual uh, DNA extraction um, of individuals coming from the same population and afterwards we pull this DNA in equimolar proportion and we sequence this uh, pool of DNA and uh, it allows us to have access to the uh, um, information at the population level, which is the, the level of interest for, for our, our studies in population genomics. Um, okay, so to uh, conclude, I'd like to, to, to thank the, the, few, uh, the co-authors of the first study on the genome scan, uh, the funding agencies and the, the organizers for the work here and for allowing me to present this work. And uh, I thank you for your attention.